memorabilia museum presided over by the MC, our executive producer, a real mover and shaker. He'll shake hands with anyone in a crowd.
Uh, what? Who? What? The what? Uh, who are all of you? My goodness! Oh my gosh! Oh, please, please! Um, uh, wow! You must all be hello, oh, quite powerful and courteous, but extraordinarily powerful to have come all this way. I wasn't expecting visitors, especially well, especially so many of you. Um. Well, oh, and flameproof, as it were. Um, please, my friends, yeah, come gather around the fire, please, uh, where it's warm. Um. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just had a, I had a silly thought. Um, a bunch of strangers gathered around a fire, waiting out a plague. The Decameron. Is anyone familiar? One of one of the earliest novels. Uh, <laughs> well, a bit of a literary deep cut, I suppose, as it were, but, well, it makes me wonder. Perhaps you'd all like to, um, perhaps we can all tell a story of our own. What do you say? Let's see. Like, like all great stories, I imagine it should begin with some kind of truth. Um, let's see. I am home, as you can tell, and as I imagine many of you are as well. Um, I've got some lukewarm coffee in the corner that, unfortunately, I haven't quite disposed of. I also have a cat. Her name's Philly. Uh, she tends to make a lot of noise, so maybe she'll make a guest appearance. Oh, and let's see. Oh, yes, I am a professional actor. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> maybe you recognize me? Yes? Uh, commercials? Stage? Screen? Um, maybe it's the light. Who knows? <laughs> um, but let's see. Well, before all of this happened, before everything shut down, you see, I was engaged in what was going to be my finest hour upon the stage, I was going to play Prospero in a production of Shakespeare's Tempest. Uh, but unfortunately, it appears that that, um, well, that production won't come to fruition. You see. Wait a second. I wonder. Would all of you here? Yes, yes, exactly. My thoughts exactly. Maybe all of you could help me tell this story. You, you could, you could help me bring my vision of the Tempest to life. You could be an acting company, an ensemble, if you, if you will. Uh, what do you say, my friends? All right, let's do it. In fact, actually, you might prove instrumental. It appears that you may have been on, well, you may have been on a voyage before, but none of that. Let's see. Um, my chevron masks, my two friends. Would you be so kind? Could you be the sailors at the beginning of the play? You see. The Tempest opens with a great storm that must take place in the mind of the audience. Perhaps you could help with that a bit. What do you say, my friends? All right. In that case, I'll send you away. Yes, my dear crop mask. You can't... Can you hear me, my crop? Oh. Can you hear, crop? You can hear all right. Good. But yes, I don't know what to make of the mask. Now, my friends, yes, hello, sailors. Can you hear me? Yes, hello. Now, great. Yes, exactly. You, my friend, with the wheel, you'll be the navigator. And you, my friend, standing right there, you will be one of the sailors. Yes, and you'll be running back and forth at the beginning of the play. Sailor, running back and forth, trying to pull in the rope to try and pull up the sails. And navigator, of course, you are steering to keep yourself away from the coast so you don't get dashed to pieces. Now, uh, but the rest of my friends, will you all come here, please? Oh, my friend, did you want to join as a sailor as well? Okay, all right, in that case, get up there, sailor, well done. All right, now, my friends, can you all come in here, please? Right this way? Let's see what I got here. Uh, yes, wonderful. And for you, and for you, and let's see, right over here. Oh, yes, come here, right this way. There, better? Ah, yes, here you are. Here you are. Oh, very spooky, I have to say, quite a tale. All right, my friends, uh, now the tempest begins with this storm, and here's a stage direction for you. A tempestuous sound of thunder and lightning is heard. As for that, now if you snap, yes, with the hand holding the flashlight, you can provide some lightning, and if you snap with your free hand, we can just bring some of that thunder. Yes, great. Now remember, the two of you sailors, you're running back and forth, pulling on those ropes, trying to get the rigging to make sure that it stands up to this great storm, and of course, navigator, you're steering back and forth. All right, my friends, when I say action, hit him with the thunder and lightning, and we'll begin this show. Everyone ready? Wonderful. And action! Hit him with that! Yes, well done! Yes! Now, sailors, right, going back and forth. Yes, trying to keep the ship afloat. Well done, navigator! Convincing! All right, I'll give you some lines, my friend. Listen close. <clears throat> Hi, my hearts! Cheerily, cheerily, my hearts! 
Taking the top sail, tend to the master's whistle. Blow till thou burst thy winds if room enough. Good, good, good. And pulling, pulling, pulling. You're pulling up those sails so you don't get blown off course. And no, they're taking on too much wind. You have to bring them down. Now, down with the top mast. Yes, yes. No, no, yar, yar, lower, lower. Now steer, navigator, steer, steer, steer. Bring her to try with the main course. And cut. Well done. Excellent start, I have to say. Well done, everyone, all around. Come on back down. Uh, round of applause, please, for our tech crew. That was marvelous. And a round of applause, please, for our performers. Well done, each of you. Oh, yes, I appear to have left that up there, but the well, reception here isn't very good, I'm ashamed to say. Um, now, my friends. Oh, it just occurred to me I didn't introduce myself. You can call me Mikey. That's what my friends call me, and I suppose we're all friends now, but well done. Exactly as performed. You too, huh? <laughs> now, exactly as performed, my friends, but there's more work. Uh, I'm just going to warm my hands up just a bit. You'll forgive me for using a cliché, but I think there's something magical in the air. I fear we're about to go on a spectacular voyage. Go ahead, my friends. Reach into the fire. See what you find. Ah, yes. Indeed. Now, and gather in a circle, friends. And I'll show you something. You have one, my friend. Well, thank you for sharing. Now, hold your mask out flat in front of you. Place the shard above the mask and let it float. Snapping with your free hand, trace the outline. Go ahead and snap with your free hand. There! Now trace the outline of the mask. Yes, well done! Put the wild waters in this room. Accident most strange, bountiful fortune hath mine enemies brought to this shore. Well done, my friends! You see that vessel there? You performed to the point of the tempest that I bade thee, exactly as performed. But there's more work. Take hands, my friends, take hands. I'll make myself a nymph of the sea, be subject to no sight but thine and mine, be invisible to every eyeball else. I'll take my shape. Approach my aerial. Come. I boarded the king's ship, first in the waist, then in the beak, the deck, in every cabin I flamed amazement. The fire and cracks of sulfurous roaring the most mighty Neptune did seem to besiege, and make his bold waves tremble, yea, his dread trident shake. Not a soul but felt the fever of the mad and played some trick of desperation. All but mariners plunged into the foaming brine and quit the vessel, and all afire with me. The king's son, Ferdinand, with hair of staring more like reeds than hair, was the first man that leaped, cried, Hell is empty, and all the devils are here. <laughs> Bring my vision to life. This is incredible, my friends. Exactly how I pictured it. You see, well, 
I also have to say on a more private note that I never thought I'd be playing Prospero and Ariel in the same production, but here we are, my friends. But this, this is Prospero's home after exile. And yes, you've got the right idea, my friend. You see, I like to imagine my, my character's homes as a way of getting into character, and this is Prospero's. After the storm that Ariel causes, the tempest that gives the play its title, Prospero's enemies wash up on this very island. But you see, Prospero, well, he has a daughter, Miranda. He fled from Milan with her in tow, and well, she knows nothing of life before this island. So now, Prospero must explain to her exactly what has occurred. Um, let's see. Yes, my, my dear Crab, have you played Miranda before? Oh, well then, well done. Then you can be my Miranda. What do you say to that? Excellent! All right. Now the rest of you can be Prospero's spirits, uh, bringing different objects of Prospero here so that he may bring Miranda up to speed. Uh, yes, Miranda. How Prospero, the former Duke of Milan, came to be in exile. Ah, uh, yes. For my studies sake, I cast the government upon my brother, and to my state grew strange. Being so transported and wrapped in secret studies, me, poor man, my library was duped him large enough. Of temporal royalties, he thought me now incapable. Take this, my friends. Ah, Miranda. Do you recognize this, Miranda? It once belonged to you, yes. Miranda, know this. I have done nothing but in care of thee, of thee, my darling, thee, my dear one. My daughter, who art ignorant of what thou art, or of whence I am. Not knowing that I am more than Prospero, master of a full poor cell, and thy no greater father. Hold tight to that friend. Ah, of course. The symbol of the Dukedom of Milan. You see, the Dukedom of Milan was mine by right, but through foul play we came from thence. My brother, thy uncle, Miranda, called Antonio, did claim my dukedom for his own. See, the king of Naples, an enemy to me, and better, hearkened my brother's suit, which was that he, in lieu of the premises of homage, and I know not how much tribute, should presently extirpate me and mine out of the dukedom, and confer fair Milan with all the honors upon my brother. Whereon, one midnight, faded to the purpose, did Antonio open the gates of Milan, in the dead of darkness, the ministers to the purpose, her events, me, and thy crying self. Antonio, my own brother. Possessing both the key of officer and office, set the hearts in the state to what tune pleased his ear, that now he was the ivy which hid my princely trunk and sucked the verdure out of it. My brother, Antonio, made an alliance, so dry was he for sway, with the king of Naples, to give him tribute, pay him Homage, subject his coronet to his crown, and bend the dukedom yet unbowed. Alas, poor Milan, to such ignoble stooping. There, take this. Uh, Miranda, would you kind be so kind as to fetch that jar there? And yes, don't worry, my friend, you have the right idea. But there's a few uh, prerequisites we must move. Gaze through the jar, Miranda, and you'll see. My people provided our escape for rotten carcass of a boat. Not big, nor tackle sail, nor mast, the very rats instinctively had to be there they passed us. Cry to the sea. Inside the winds we hid beside that boat. It is mother. Now holding tight to the jar, Miranda, and holding tight to the staff. Cast the other objects into the pool. And now, my good friend, stir them. A very thorough spirit and noble. You see, friend, there we are. And know this. The waves were at their fiercest. 
thou wast that did deserve it. Thou didst smile and fuse with the fortitude from heaven to bear up against what should ensue. Sit still, my friends. Hear the last of our sea song. Here, on this island, we are. Oh, but that will. Oh, I'm so sorry. All these water sounds. I'm so sorry, my friends. Uh, we're going to have to pick up that story in just a moment. I, I wasn't expecting so many visitors, and unfortunately, I now have to take this opportunity to relieve myself. Um, so please, I know, happens, right? Uh, please go ahead and uh, enjoy some of these marshmallows, hopefully not too soggy, and I will be back in just a moment. So sorry. that friends not very professional of me but i appreciate your concern um, now uh, shall we continue where we left off great friends come back down oh a flaming marshmallow with you ah oh burn some way going down not bad all right and right this way wonderful now shall we continue our story friends good uh where did i leave off oh yes the island uh let's all join hands and there. Here we are! Yes, the island. <laughs> and a magnificent one at that. Now, let's see. I, I've been thinking a lot about the play, and I have to say, much is made of fate and luck in this, but wouldn't you find it a bit suspicious if you washed up on this island, then many years later all your enemies who had did you wrong showed up, and there's no one here but you, your daughter, oh, and a Caliban, who, for the record, we should talk about. Um, in the meantime, Prosper is always asking his, those folks that he has captive or are in his employ to do different favors for him. And I'm wondering if you could do one of his favorites to help me get into character, you see? He's always asking folks to make him piles of wood. So, spirits, make me a wood pile, and I will tell you of Caliban, the original inhabitant of the island. You see, Caliban washed up here with his mother, a witch. And in fact, that's where Prospero gets his, his power. Caliban teaches him spells and all the resources of the island. And his home, well, he speaks of it in other terms. Caliban speaks of the island as being full of noises, sounds, and sweet airs that give delight and hurt not, in contrast to our Italian friends who view the island as untamed and barren. You see, in Shakespeare's time, conquering the New World was all the rage, and he wrote about places he didn't go, people he didn't meet. Caliban is perhaps a product of that. A more modern retelling might view Caliban as the native person on the island, and the Europeans as colonizers, but it's hard to know exactly what Shakespeare intended. He both celebrates and criticizes European power. Caliban has beautiful language, beautiful dialogue, but, well, he also receives some of the worst treatment in the play. In the end, Caliban, like all the other characters in the show, is subjugated and subjected to Prospero's power, his narrative. Which, speaking of which, we should pick right back up. Now, my dear Miranda, I think I've got something for you, my dear. Ah, there we are. Look at that. Oh, and my dear, let's see. My dear Star Mask, have you played Ferdinand before? Oh, well then wonderful. I think you've got the strong personality of a Ferdinand. Yes. There you are! Oh, would you look at that? Quite the hat. Now, let's see. We've also got some spirits here. Uh, now, would you be in charge, my dear, my dear Swirl? Would you please be so kind as to be the love spirit watching over these proceedings? Yes. And let's see. Let's get some spirits for Miranda and Ferdinand. Ah, yes. Chevron there. Would you be so kind as to attend to Miranda? You two, go hide behind that big tree there. You see, Prospero's grand plan to get revenge is to get Miranda the rightful heir to the dukedom of Milan, together with Ferdinand, rightful heir to the kingdom of Naples. They're going to meet, fall in love instantly, then get married, like ASAP, because that's totally going to work, right? Except it does, even though Miranda's never seen another man, except for Prospero and Caliban in her life, which, hey, maybe that's why it works. Miranda, spirit, go forth behind that tree. Now, let's see. Ooh, okay, love spirit, go ahead and bless this place. Roses, some snaps, snapping some love dust in the air, the whole works. Yes. 
Now, you two spirits are going to attend to Ferdinand. Ferdinand, you see, in the very beginning of the play, the storm, the tempest that Ariel created, Ferdinand was that first person who jumped off the ship. And he believes that, well, his father and all of his friends aboard the ship have died. So, Ferdinand, you've been wandering this island, sobbing, crying. Yes, crying your eyes out. Spirits, can you provide some comfort to this, this grieving individual? Yes, go forth, spirit, comfort them. Yes, there you are. Yes, there, there, Ferdinand. And you've brought him to this grove, where Miranda, hearing such a commotion, peeks out from behind a tree and sees the most beautiful man she's ever seen in her entire life. And she can't help but she speaks, and she says, What is a spirit? I might call him a thing divine, for nothing natural I ever saw is so noble. All right, spirit, time to maybe poke Miranda out of her hiding place. And then Miranda makes an appearance. Now spirits draw Ferdinand's attention to Miranda. Yes, there. And Ferdinand, he sees the most beautiful woman he's ever seen in his life. And he cries out, most surely the goddess on whom these heirs attend. Oh, you wonder if you be maid or no. Miranda's reply. No wonder, sir, but certainly a maid. <laughs> well done, love spirit. Excellent work. And Ferdinand, it's your lucky day. You can't believe it. She speaks Italian, and you cry out, My language, heavens! Myself am Naples, who with these eyes never since it ever beheld the king, my father, Rack! <laughs> and now he's crying again. Oh, not a great look on a first day. Hey, come on, spirit. Let's cheer him up. And perhaps, Miranda, you feel compelled to provide some comfort to this beautiful, noble stranger. Oh, thank you, love spirit. Well done. All right, it's going great. Now, Prospero is going to make an appearance. And he says, a word, good sir. I fear you have done yourself some wrong. A word. Spirits, come to Prospero's side. Right this way, spirits. They both are in either's power, but this swift business I must uneasy make, lest too light winning make the prize light. You understand? If they fall in love too quickly, perhaps they'll fall out of love too quickly. So we're going to have to put an obstacle in their way, make them earn it. So, Prospero is going to accuse Ferdinand of coming to this island to usurp him. <gasps> Gasp. Now, Miranda, she can't believe what she's hearing. This can't be. Miranda's going to stand in between Ferdinand and Prospero. And she says, no, father, there's nothing ill can dwell in such a temple. But Ferdinand is a young man ready to defend his honor. And he says, it's sword time. <gasps> Spirits, come to Prospero's aid. Defend me from Ferdinand. Yes, put thy sword up, traitor, for I can more disarm thee with this stick and make thy weapon drop. Ha! Now, Spirits, corner him. Surrender, Ferdinand. Put down your sword. Ah. Now, with Ferdinand subdued, Prospero is going to give him a punishment. Ferdinand, under the charge of treason, I sentence you to make me a pile of wood. Don't ask questions, my friend. It's in the text. Now, spirits, I want you to look over this traitor. Yes, with my comically large staff. And, friends, I want you to look over this traitor. And, Miranda, I forbid you from assisting the traitor in any way. Boop. All right, my friends. Now, go ahead. Ferdinand, make me that wood pile. And, yes, maybe give him some space. We don't want to cut his throat just yet. Just yet, Ferdinand. All right. Now, Prospero is going to go invisible and observe the sea. Now, spirit. Make sure they fall in love. Ferdinand is making a wood pile, doing this back-breaking labor. And Miranda, while she's watching this noble, beautiful individual work so hard under this unjust punishment, and she can't help it, she cries out, Alas, I pray you, work not so hard. Let me carry your burden. Pray you, rest a while. But Ferdinand, ever the noble soul, says, No, precious creature. I'd rather crack my sinews and break my back than you should such dishonor undergo while I sit lazily by. <gasps> Miranda, she can't help it. Again, 
This creature, he's suffering for her sake. And he, she cries out, I am your wife if you'll have me. My husband then? <gasps> Spirits. Well, oh, Ferdinand for Bybee. Aye, my heart longs for you as freedom are over bondage. Hooray, we've done it, spirits. Well done. Ferdinand and Miranda are getting hitched. Excellent work. Hooray, hooray. Well done. Now, on the other side of the island, of course, is Ferdinand's father, Alonso, very much alive and still the king of Naples. He's wandering. Yes, indeed. The crest of Naples. Now, he's wandering with Antonio, Prospero's brother, who, of course, usurped him so many years ago. Uh, my friend, Chevron asked, would you be so kind as to be Alonso? Let's see, got something for you? Oh, would you look at that poof? All right. Oh, and my dear Swirl. Oh, all right, or my onion. Onion, would you be so kind as to be Antonio? There you are, excellent. And, oh, yes, you, my dear friend, can be Gonzalo, Prospero's former friend. Now, oh, Gonzalo the Fierce. That is a different interpretation than I've seen. All right, my friends, let's go ahead and skip ahead to the next scene. Uh, just a warning, I've set you up a banquet of sorts, some food. Just enjoy yourselves and sort of, you know, play out the scene, if you will. I'm going to take a bit of a vocal rest break myself, and I'll be with you before you know it. All right? So, I'll see you shortly. Enjoy, and I'll be right back. and visit young Ferdinand, whom they suppose drowned, and his and mine. <laughs> I'm so sorry for playing a prank on you all like that, but oh, my goodness, you should have seen your faces. They were, well, well, they are the same as they normally are, but you were scared, I promise you. <laughs> all right, now my friends, uh, the Dukes, they feed themselves with fear, and they have indeed. Yes, well done. They have repented, and now there's nothing to do but go ahead and bless Ferdinand and Miranda. Oh, what? Two flower crowns? Is it possible? Don't worry, we'll sort that out in just a moment. Now, and, well, let's go ahead. This place is a bit drab, wouldn't you say? Let's go ahead and spruce it up, as my dear friend Onion Mask has been doing. Using the same spell in the beginning that we used to summon the ship, we can restore these trees. The rest of you rabble over whom I have power go to restore this place with the blessings of Juno and Juno. Let's see, just about there, and that's it. Yes! Lovely! Well done, spirits! Now let's all join together once more. Yes, let's go ahead and fix the costuming issue. Indeed! It shows that there's a goodly presence here, ready to bless this kind of couple. 
Let's see. Ah, yes, for you, and for you, for you, and for you. Excellent. And of course, a little flower crown for Miranda. And there's one other thing I'm curious about. Can everyone hold their masks out, please, in front of them? Yes! There we are! Now everybody's dressed for the occasion. Wonderful. So yes, Prospero is going to get the spirits to imitate the gods of Juno and Ceres. Juno, of course, being goddess of marriage and family. Ceres, goddess of agriculture and fertility. Now, uh, Ferdinand and Miranda, would you be so kind as to meet me over there by the altar? Yes, wonderful. And gods and goddesses, come forth. Yes, all right. Now you and you, my two friends, my two uh, more diminutive fellows, are going to be Iris, the rainbow regal messenger who calls all the gods and goddesses to this place. So if you'll give them some space, my friend, set forth on this walkway. And I'm thinking, you know, some large gathering motions, you know, kind of bringing and gathering the spirits, some twirls, all that kind of stuff. I'll give you some text. And set forth. You nymphs called naiads of the windering brooks with your sedged crowns and ever harmless looks. Come, leave your crisp channels, and on this green land, answer your summons. You know cause command. Come, temperate nymphs, and come to celebrate a contract of true love. Be not too late. Excellent, yes, a giant fruit tart would indeed invite people to get to the party, and also some tea beer. All right, well done. Now, yes, Juno with the fruit tart, you are going to bless this couple. And Juno, of course, goddess of marriage and family. I'm thinking she's a bit like the mom, the mother. It's a sad day. Her children are all grown, but it's also very happy. You know, it's bittersweet. That kind of thing. Okay, okay. You take it from here, Juno. Bless this couple. Honor, riches, marriage, blessing, long continuance, and increasing. Hourly joys be still upon you. Juno gives her blessing on you. <laughs> now Juno gives them a big hug, big, big hug. Well done, Juno. Excellent work. And last but certainly not least, come Ceres. No, not Cerebus. Ceres. Come on. All right. Set for it, Ceres. Yes. Ceres, goddess of fertility and agriculture. I'm thinking maybe you get a little flirty with bride and groom. You know, fertility and whatnot. So. Step forth, Ceres, and bless this couple. Earth's increase, foys in plenty, barns and garners never empty. Vines with clustering bunches growing, plants with goodly burthens flowing. Spring shall come to you at the farthest, at the very end of harvest. Scarcity and want shall shun you. Ceres blessing now be on. Yay! Well done, Ceres! And now, of course, as you see, by this ceremonial large dog doll and this oversized fruit tart, I now pronounce you Mary. Hooray! You may touch masks. Aw, so sweet. Oh, well done. Oh, okay, pretty tender. All right. Okay, all right. That's, that's enough. Come on. It's, it's a wedding, folks. All right. And my friends, let's go ahead and come together. Join hands. And now, with these blessings, we have returned. And so we have. For after the Dukes have repented their evil ways and Ferdinand and Miranda have been joined together, there's nothing left for Prospero to do but give up his magic and return home. And in similar fashion, it's time for me to leave you as well. And just as Prospero asks his, well, his audience to release him through applause, I must ask the same of you, for you have been my audience. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my friends. I, I greatly appreciate it. And, well, I just want you all to know, on a personal note, thank you for your time, your presence, your generosity of spirit. You are all truly bright lights in a very, very dark storm. Thank you. So, let's all gather around this fire, friends, for one final blessing. Perhaps our friend will be doing this. Uh. 
It's starting. The storm is picking up. Our revels now have ended. These, our actors, as I foretold you, were all spirits and are melted into air, into thin air. And like the baseless fabric of this vision, the cloud-capped towers, the gorgeous palaces, the solemn temples, the great globe itself, yea, all which it inherit, shall dissolve. And like this insubstantial pageant faded, leave not a wrap behind. We are such stuff as dreams are made of. And our little life is rounded with a sleep. So, come, my friends. Let us dance around this fire one last time before you must depart this vision. <laughs> All right. Now, sailors, come take the center stage. Show us what you've got. Well done! And sailors, now use your powers and point to the roof! <laughs> well done, sailors! Now, Ferdinand, Miranda, take the stage! Yes, ooh, a couple dance, well done! And now, Ferdinand Miranda, point there to the trees! Yes! Well done! Excellent! And now, gods and goddesses, take the stage! Yes! And there, to the bushes! <laughs> it is! Alright, friends. It's almost time. Come, let's all join hands one last time. You, the audience and the spirits which have been my charge to the elements, be free! <laughs> and fare thou well! So long, friends! It's bright white. Can't miss it. <laughs> 